Hello, welcome to IF. We post a new video every week. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that little bell, and never miss a video again. In this video, we are going to ask if today we are actually in the grips of World War III. We will look at recent events and compare them to the events that triggered World War I and World War II. We must remember that at the start of these two huge global conflicts, they were not named world wars. They became world wars slowly as different crises rolled out and spread from country to country. Countries became allied and others enemies. Fighting in ever more vicious battles with more and more advanced weaponry, the death toll from both wars reaching 100 million people. Are we seeing events that could lead to a war with a death toll that would surpass the number of dead from these world wars? Let's take a look. This week has seen terror attacks in London, North Korean missiles flying over Japan, and the never-ending conflict in the Middle East, along with ethnic cleansing in Africa, and the continuing decline in politics around the world. Protests are a daily occurrence in countries both rich and poor. Religious persecution is taking place in many countries and all religions, both minor and major. Terrorist strikes are quickly becoming the daily norm in too many places. It seems the world is smoldering and could burst into raging flames at any moment. Is this the perfect confluence of events that will cause World War III? Or has it already begun? We first have to remind ourselves that wars are never the same. From the days of us bashing each other's brains in with rocks to the silver clad knights of old. To today killing with drones and supersonic fighter jets striking targets from miles away. War evolves and changes. World War 3 would be no different. This war could have already begun and may well be based on technological ability, cyber attacks, drone strikes and other high tech methods. All of which have been used and continue to be used daily. Is World War 3 a stealth war? Global hostilities are expanding, financial and economic strikes being used on enemy countries. We see sanctions and embargoes against many of the biggest global players. This economic warfare leading militaries across the planet to prepare for actual war. War games in many regions have increased with Russia and Belarus beginning major war games just this Thursday. This operation involving thousands of troops, tanks and aircraft right on NATO's eastern edge practicing how to hunt down and destroy armed spies among other maneuvers. This is a historical time we are all witnessing. There is a clear danger that due to repetitive extremely poor decisions we could be at a point when war is unavoidable or as the title of this video says we are in fact in the opening acts of World War 3. World War 1 was said to have begun with the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. His death at the hands of Gavrilo Princip a Serbian nationalist with ties to a secretive military group known as the Black Hand propelled the European military powers towards war. But that is a very simplified version of the truth written into history books by the victors. The gradual emergence of a group of alliances between major powers was partly to blame for the descent into war. By 1914 these alliances resulted in six major powers of Europe merging into two large groups. Britain, France and Russia formed the Triple Entente, while Germany, Austria, Hungary and Italy comprised of the Triple Alliance. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand forced these countries to come to one another's aid, this leading to declarations of war and produced a domino effect through Europe. As the war progressed acts of aggression forced other countries to choose an ally and join the fight. Others such as Australia, India and most African colonies fought at the behest of their imperial rulers. When the war was over Europe and much of the world lay in ruins, 18 million dead, the victims of the first mechanized war. World War II started from the problems that were left from World War I. Some would even argue that we should really consider them one and the same with the time between the wars being viewed as a respite but not an end. 
In 1918, the Treaty of Versailles held Germany and Austria-Hungary responsible for World War I and imposed on them crippling financial sanctions, territorial dismemberment and isolation, and Germany was forced to demilitarize. This time of hardship for the German people led to the rise of Hitler. Hitler, far from having a lifelong military aspiration, had been a painter. He joined the Bavarian army at the age of 25 after the outbreak of World War I. He served primarily as a runner carrying messages between the trenches. He was decorated twice for bravery and was injured on two separate occasions. Once he was hit in the thigh by an exploding shell and he was temporarily blinded by mustard gas nearing the end of the war. Germany's eventual surrender left Hitler uprooted and in need of a new focus. He became an intelligent agent in Germany's diminished military and was sent to infiltrate the German Workers' Party. It is there he found himself inspired by Anton Drexel's anti-communist, anti-Jewish doctrine and ended up developing his own strain of anti-Semitism. This led him to announce in 1919 that the ultimate goal must be to remove all Jews. Gradually he began to rise through the party ranks, eventually renaming the party the Nationalist Socialist German Workers' Party, which adopted the swastika as its emblem. Hitler went on to win broad public support, attracted large donations from many. For the next decade he rose through the ranks to then become Germany's Chancellor and when President Paul von Hindenburg died, Hitler appointed himself Führer. He quickly denounced the Treaty of Versailles, mounting furious attacks on the unfair terms of the settlement. The treaty incensed Germans, but it had not managed to contain Germany's potential and by the mid-1930s the country was surrounded by weak divided states. Hitler and Germany took the opportunity to make a second bid for European domination. As war engulfed Europe, Japan took this time as an opportune moment to continue with their expansionist policy. Nationalism was strong and it led to the Second Sino-Japanese War. Japan won some vital initial victories in China but they failed to conquer the large country. Japan committed atrocities in Nanking in what is now called the Nanking Massacre. The USA opposed Japan's expansionist actions and the brutal acts of the Nanking Massacre. Japan was not able to get the oil that was crucial for her economic growth. Japan went into a tripartite alliance with Germany and Italy. This further strained the relationships with the USA. Japan decided that the only way to counter the crippling economic sanctions was to go on the offensive. These Japanese armed forces developed plans to attack the USA. They then attacked Pearl Harbor. We see patterns forming in the historical record of key actions that led to the point when the only choice these nations felt they had was war. We see parallels today. Both wars' origins had strong links to economic hardships, sanctions and trade disagreements. The USA currently holds sanctions against six countries and against peoples from 16 other countries. The complicated economic ties with China and the increasing national debt, much of that debt Chinese owned, have seen economic warfare openly on display for the last few years. The last superpower desperately trying to hold on to its position as the newer economic powers rise. This then has led us into another cause of the two previous world wars, expansionism. We see countries expanding into new areas almost daily now. Regime change is happening with an alarming regularity. This destabilizing many parts of the globe and forcing countries with opposing ideas and ideals to share borders. This creating yet more conflict. All nations are guilty of this as they carve up the planet with what seems like little to no concern about the implications this will have. This leading us to our final sign that we could be living in the beginning of World War III, displacement. We are seeing large amounts of migration across the globe. We did take a look at that with our video If We Need Borders. As we all see each and every day, many people are choosing to leave their home country, maybe to chase economic opportunity or to flee an ongoing conflict. This has led to more tension as these displaced people look for a new home. These migrants bring with them their customs and beliefs and these often clash with the societies they are moving to. This then forms into conflict. 
which then causes the formation of groups that wish to fight for or against those beliefs and values. This leads to civil violence, terrorism and as we all know that is very much something we are dealing with today. So it would seem that the world is in fact at the same point or at least similar to as it was before the two world wars. So why do we not see your country needs you posters everywhere encouraging people to join the fight? Maybe because our country, well governments, don't actually need us. Much of warfare is now computerized and as we mentioned at the start of the video, drones and cyber attacks are how countries attack one another today. The days of massive deployments of troops are gone, it's just not cost effective. The use of high precision missiles and maybe eventually nukes, we're looking at you North Korea, are the most effective way to destroy a country. Then send in an occupying force to colonize that area once the majority of the enemy has been wiped out. This sounds like the world we live in today. Afghanistan, Iraq and others are all falling to this military tactic. So is this World War 3? Is World War 3 the war we sit and watch online? What do you think? Please comment below and as always thanks for watching. If you like what you saw hit that sub button, throw us a like or catch us on social media. Till next time.